Hi. I'd like to show you how with two questions and four pictures, you can have a simple way to connect with people and help connect them to God. And the first question I asked to a gal yesterday serving me in a restaurant. And I said, Courtney, can I ask you something? If you could wish one thing from God today for you, what would that be? And she thought for a moment and said, oh, for my, for my daughter Tiffany, that uh, I would get her on the fast track to college. She's 13 years old now. And I said, would it be okay if I said a one sentence prayer that God would help meet your wish? Would that be okay? And she said, yes. And I prayed a one sentence prayer, just prayed for that one thing and only that thing. Didn't bow my head, didn't close my eyes, but just prayed for that one thing in Jesus' name. And she said, thank you so much. And I've asked hundreds of people that question. In fact, Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? He asked James and John the same question. What do you want me to do for you? God asked Solomon in a dream, what would you wish me to give you? And so I asked folk that question. And as I say, whatever their response, I'll say, would it be okay if I said a one sentence prayer that God would help meet your wish? Now for Courtney, she was having to move to other tables. And so I said, Courtney, before you go, I wrote this, and this little flyer will share with you God's one wish for you, which is to begin a friendship with you. And she said, thank you, and said, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to read this. But for people, if I sense time and interest, and that may be, you know, somebody at work or, or somebody you, you, you meet in a restaurant or wherever in life, I'll say, um, did you know that God has one wish for you? May I show you with these four pictures on my wristband what that one wish is? Would that be okay? I asked a few weeks ago Samuel that question, and he said, sure. So I said, Samuel, the first picture is a diamond, and diamonds are a great value, aren't they? And God's one wish for you and me is to begin a friendship with us because we are of great value to God. But why is it, I said, Samuel, that God often seems far away and unreal? In fact, sometimes we even wonder if he's there, don't we? And Samuel nodded his head. And I said, the reason is because of the second picture, that you and I are on the dark side and God is on the light side. Because we've done wrong, haven't we, Samuel? I said, Samuel, have you ever told a lie? He said, yes. I said, so have I. That makes us liars, doesn't it? Have you ever taken something that didn't belong to you? I have. That makes us thieves, doesn't it? And he said, yes. I said, Samuel, have you ever wished somebody was out of your life? It's like they were dead to you. You never saw them again. He went, oh, yes. I said, so have I. I said, now, Samuel wouldn't actually kill them, you know, with a knife or a gun. But in our hearts, it's like they were dead to us. And he said, yes. And that's bitterness and hatred. And before God, that's murder. And Samuel, it's these things, our lying, our stealing, our bitterness and hatred. These are the things that cut us off from God now. And when we die, we're going to be cut off from him forever. I said, Samuel, you like that idea? He said, no, I don't. I said, nor do I, and nor does God. And so the third picture is God did something about it 2,000 years ago. And I said, Samuel, think of my hand as you and me. And uh, just took the little leaflet and said, this is the wrong we've done. And I said, Samuel, think of this other hand as God, as Jesus on the cross. And God took our lies and put them on Jesus as if on the cross, he became a liar who'd never told any lies. And God took our ceiling and put it on Jesus on the cross. He became a thief who'd never taken anything that didn't belong to him. And God took our business and hatred and put it on Jesus as if on the cross he became a murderer who'd never hated anyone. And I said, Samuel, he did that for you and for me. And as I do this with my hands, I, I, I looked at Samuel's heart and I look at people's heart because at this point there's something about the cross that uh, it's hard to be neutral with the cross. It's either going to draw them to God or they're going to back off. And I watched Samuel's heart being drawn towards God. And I said, Samuel, he did that for you and me. In fact, the Bible says, he who knew no sin, who'd never done any wrong, became sin for us. He took our wrong on the cross in our place for us. 
And so I said, Samuel, you notice our hand now, it's free. We didn't have to work for this. We didn't have to do anything. Try to be a good person, go to church or a mosque or a temple, wherever it is. God did this for us. And now the fourth picture, Samuel. God is reaching out his hand and he wants to begin a friendship with us. God's one wish is to begin a friendship with us. And, and I said, God, Samuel's reaching out his hand to you. Would you take his hand? And he said, yes, I will. I said, what do you have to do, Samuel, to begin a friendship with God? And I went back to these last three pictures. I said, Samuel, this picture of the black and white, to say to God, God, I'm so sorry for the wrong that I've done and going my own way. I said, Samuel, are you sorry? He said, yes, I am. I've done wrong in my life and gone my own way. And then the second word is thank you. Thank you that on the cross, God took all my wrong and put it on his son, Jesus, on the cross in our place. And then please, God, please, God, would you come? I want to take your hand. I want to be forgiven by you. I want to go your way, not my way in life. And I said, Samuel, do you want to take his hand? And he said, yes. And then I led him in a simple prayer where we come to God and say, sorry, thank you, and please. I said to Samuel, do you want to say this in your heart after me as I say the words or out loud? He said, in, in my heart. And I said, if you really mean that, that's what matters, whether you pray it out loud or in your heart. And he prayed as I led him in prayer saying, sorry for the wrong that I've done and going my own way. And thank you that on the cross, God took my sin and put it on his son, Jesus. And please, God, would you forgive me? I want to begin a friendship with you. I want to go your way, not my way. And Samuel took God's hand of friendship. And I've seen many people take God's hand of friendship. And then I said, Samuel, I want to give you my wristband. Would you put this on? And would you show a friend or a family member today? And this is a way of them confessing with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. And he took this. He said, yes, I would. And then I said, Samuel, would you take... This little leaflet, One Wish Leaflet, we're actually in here. It explains the four pictures that I've been sharing with you. Would you take this and would you, as you show this to a friend or a family member, would you give them this and say, this will explain God's one wish for you, which is also to begin a friendship with God. And Samuel took this and said, yes, I will. So this is a simple way with two questions and four pictures, a simple way to show somebody how they can connect with God and uh, begin a friendship with him. Now in the packet, you get the wristband, which is the black one, or you can get the white one, which is for a smaller wrist. You get the One Wish flyers. You get the Growing in Friendship booklet, which is the three-week booklet to help somebody grow in their friendship once they've taken God's hand of friendship. Then also you get this card where I share the 10 values which is the thinking behind this approach one wish with the two questions and the four pictures. And this all comes in this one wish packet that you can get on my website, onewishforyou.com. Thank you.